Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're talking about the differences between investing in shares and investing in property. And some of the things I'm about to say are very general, they don't apply specifically to any one investment. So take these rules of thumb away and then consider them um, to your situation and how you think they apply. Okay, the first thing that we have to understand is why would we even invest in shares or property? Um, when we invest in shares, what we're looking for is typically the price to go up, so the share price to go up, as well as receiving dividend income. So we may receive a check or a deposit into our bank account, say, every six months or every year in the form of a dividend, and we hope that share prices will rise over time. With property, it's a very similar thing. We hope that the price of the property goes up over time, but we also hope to receive rental income if we own the property and we can put a tenant in there and um, they can pay us a, a regular stream of money. The next thing to consider, and probably the most important question for anyone to ask themselves is, what is the risk? What is the risk of investing in either of these two investments? And I think, personally, I think when you, when you look at these types of investments, it's important to understand how long you have to invest. The longer you have to invest, typically the lower your risk or the more likely it is that you can take on more risk. When it comes to shares, over time we've seen the market increase um, steadily, but if you, if you zoom right into the day-to-day -day movements, the month-to-month -month or the year-to-year -year movements, things are bouncing around like this. But over the long term, there is a definite trend that goes upwards. It's a similar thing with property in Australia over the last three decades. Um, so in the short term, with shares, you can expect a high amount of risk. And by that, I mean the ups and downs, the, the companies that just tank and then the companies that do really well, they're very hard to predict. Um, it's very hard to predict those outcomes. So that would, you would say that that's a, a high risk. But over the longer term, I would say that it's a, it's a lower risk if you have a diversified portfolio. For property in the short term, the risk is also high. Even though, or although we don't necessarily associate property with prices going backwards in Australia, it is a very, very high possibility. Um, yes, we've seen interest rates fall in Australia and there's been plenty of house price appreciation, but at the same time, we shouldn't rule out the fact that if you're trying to flip a house from one year to the next, there's no guarantee that you'll be able to sell it for more than what you purchased it for. But over the longer term, once again, we can see that the risk is lower because we can allow the steady increase um, of the economy as well as um, wages growth and all those things that come with um, a, a strong economy. So next, how much do we need to invest in shares and how much do we need to invest in property? Typically, in Australia, you can invest with as, li with as little as $500 plus a brokerage fee, so a fee to actually buy and sell the shares, which can be as little as $10. So it's about $500 to get started. In property, you're looking at tens of thousands of dollars. I mean, of course, it depends on the, the property you're buying um, and whether you have another home, so if you have equity that you can use. But typically, you're looking at tens of thousands of dollars for a deposit. And um, it's not always easy to save tens of thousands of dollars. So that's why many people do have, um, do choose to, to invest in the share market with a smaller amount of money, say five or $10,000. Next, we have liquidity. And um, we've done another video on the Rask Finance website on liquidity, but just quickly, liquidity means how fast can you get your money in and out of the investment. In the share market, if you're investing in blue chip shares, you can typically get your money in and out within just a couple of minutes. And by that I mean it, it does take a few days to settle and for the money to actually arrive in your bank account, but you can buy or sell usually within a matter of minutes. For the property market, what we're looking at is measuring liquidity in months. So um, to, sell, to sell a property, for example, you would have to do, you might have to do maintenance or upkeep. You would have to contact a real estate agent, take photos listed on the, online and then you'd have to find a seller who would agree to a settlement and that can take months. It usually does take months. So in terms of liquidity, shares are much easier to get your money in and out of. Property takes a little bit longer. Now, that's neither good nor bad. I mean, if you're in a rush, sure, shares would be better, but let's just hope that you're never in a rush to sell your investment. What about the learning curve? What do you need to learn to understand what's going on? Well, even amongst people that invest in the share market, more of them 
don't actually understand how exactly it works. So the learning curve for shares is much higher than it is for property. And I've put in brackets here, at least at first, there's a steep learning curve for shares at first. But over time, once you um, learn the basics, you can, and there's plenty of great resources online. Once you've learned the basics, you can um, get over that learning curve pretty quickly, and then you can start to really understand what's driving markets, what drives companies and share prices. And for property, obviously we all live in houses or homes, um, so people tend to be pretty familiar with what's required to, to buy a property or to own a property. Uh, so the learning curve you'd say is quite low and, and you don't have to learn a great deal to get, get your foot in the door. Finally, we have cost. What does it cost to invest in each of these? I mentioned brokerage costs earlier on, which are about $10 in Australia for small amounts, for small investments. As you invest more money, um, the, the cost will increase. Sometimes you'll pay account fees or you'll pay fees for particular features in an online share broking account. But typically, or you know, relative to property at least, shares are cheaper to invest in. The, the cost is a lot lower. Property is actually very high. Now, we many of us refuse to admit this but typically when you buy a property um, you've got to pay stamp duty in your state you've got to pay maintenance um, upkeep you've got to pay fees to conveyances or lawyers um, as well as any like so upkeep you may have a tenant in the property who wants an air conditioner for example that takes your time it takes your money or if um, you're using a real estate agent then you've got to pay a real estate agent or someone to manage the property so the costs associated with property are very, very high compared to shares. So that about rounds us off of the differences or the similarities between shares and property. Now there's no right or wrong answer as to which one is best and I suppose that it depends on your situation and that's where a financial professional can help. Um, one thing to note though, people believe that if they do invest in shares, particularly Australian shares, and then they invest in Australian property that they're very well diversified, but that might not be the case. Now, diversification is this idea that when one thing falls, the other shouldn't fall or it should fall by a less amount. If, Austra if the Australian share market falls, you can almost guarantee or at least bet that something will happen to the Australian property market and I doubt it's going to be a good thing. It's, shares aren't going to fall and then property goes like this. It's not going to counteract. So it's important that when you do invest, you consider the idea of diversification and how perhaps you can get exposure to other asset classes such as bonds or fixed income or even international investments such as international shares or even investing via managed funds or ETFs. But that rounds us out. For more videos like this, be sure to head to the Rask Finance website where we've also got the primer on liquidity um, as well as some introductory courses to investing in shares.